This is Brian Jakovich, and welcome to Stelgen Screencasts. In this week's screencast, I'm going to go over using AWS Auto Scaling Groups. An auto scaling group is used to automatically scale your infrastructure to meet the needs of your application. Let's say when you're building your application for fault tolerance and high availability, an important architectural decision is to use auto scaling groups. Auto scaling groups are great for managing costs as well. When you're using an auto scaling group in combination with something like an elastic load balancer and a CloudWatch, you can disperse load to a fleet of servers on the back end and will they will increase and decrease the amount of servers based upon network demand. This means you can run your application on a relatively low amount of servers uh, during normal demand and then increase the fleet automatically if you have a spike in traffic. Therefore, you're running your application and incurring the least amount of cost possible until the application requires extra power, rather than having a large group of servers sitting idle, wasting money, and waiting for a spike in traffic that will require them. In this diagram, I'm detailing out that type of application. I won't be going into too much detail about Elastic Load Balancers or CloudWatch today, but they're good for explaining this point. Let's say you had a network coming in, hitting your load balancer and being dispersed around your instances. Basically, you have six servers that are taking requests, but then it hits five o'clock. And that's when the amount of traffic that uh, hits your site it goes up dramatically. So much that these six servers cannot handle all that load. What would happen in this particular situation is CloudWatch would see that the network end is increasing uh, dramatically. And if you had an alarm set up that says if so many network end requests are being made, then increase the amount of servers that are inside your network. So what would happen is CloudWatch sees that there's, or there's too much load. It tells the auto scaling group that it has too much load and it needs to increase servers. Auto scaling group then adds, let's say, one to each side that is enough to handle the, the network can request. So what happens here is the combination of Elastic Load Balancer, which balances out the network to all your servers, in combination with CloudWatch, which monitors the network in, network out, and then Auto Scaling Groups, which does the actual increase and decrease of your servers depending on the amount of load. So I went over how you can increase, but then how can you decrease? Let's say you had another alarm that was set that if you are experiencing 20% CPU utilization on each of the instances to reduce the amount of instances in your infrastructure um, by two, two instances. If CloudWatch notices that there is CPU utilization is so low, it will tell the auto scaling group to start decreasing the amount of instances. So this is great for, for cost savings. And you may ask why. Well, if you run a solid state of maybe six instances, handle your typical 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. requests, which are just you know generally moderate and uh, generally aren't seeing spikes. You only have to run those six. But as soon as it hits when you have crazy, like the crazy traffic, your infrastructure can then amp up to 8, 10, 12, whatever you want to handle that so your site doesn't go down. Whereas in typical scaling environment, you're paying for enough servers to deal with the load of that the five o'clock rush at all times, which means you're paying for a lot of extra CPU hours or physical servers for basically nothing because they just sit there idle and wait for that huge spike in traffic. And that's that's where auto scaling groups really are useful. You're able to automate when you want more CPU power. Based upon what I've said, that auto scaling groups are pretty much a solution to everything, right? Um, but then you're maybe wondering how do you use one? Well, that's where our cloud permission templates come in. You could use the AWS CLI or the Ruby SDK or Java SDK, whatever you want. Call out to 
the auto scaling API. But for the purpose of the screencast, I'm just going to do it in a CloudFormation template. Okay, so I created a copy of the CloudFormation template that was used in last week's screencast, where we went over using Hosted Chef. In this template, we currently have it scripted to launch a single instance. The changes that we need to make to make it auto scale are completely minimal. So the first thing we need to do is create an auto scaling group resource inside this CloudFormation template. I'm just going to call it web server group. And I'm going to give it the type of auto scaling group. Next, I'm going to define which availability zones I want this to be, this auto scaling group to cover. As I, as I mentioned before, I'm going to explain a little bit about auto scaling groups. I'm not going to go into serious detail about what they are because it's a huge conversation. But a basic idea is an availability zone is supposed to represent a physical data warehouse of AWS. It can be located anywhere in the particular region. So in this screencast, we're going to be launching our environment up in US East. That means we have access to US East A through E. And those US East A could be in Maine, could be in Florida, could be in Virginia. And US East E could be in a separate location, maybe Michigan. They're all secret locations that AWS knows about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify for this AutoScan group to launch in any availability zone. And this is something that CloudFormation just gives you the ability, the ability to do. In this FN get AZs and I pass in, uh, I don't pass in anything means it will use all availability zones for the particular region. So I'll have access to A through E. This is particularly important because the ability to have all, all availability zones in this particular auto scaling group enables us to get a multi-AZ infrastructure configuration, and which is a great starting point for building a high, availabil high availability fault tolerant infrastructure. The reason why is you want to have multi-AZ infrastructure. That means your servers aren't confined to one location. They're not in just Maine and they're not in just Virginia. They're in Maine and Virginia and you are load balancing between the two. The first thing I need to do is I'm going to set the min, max, and desired capacity. The, the min, and max, and, and desired, their, their ability or their, their ways that you can control how big or how small you want your auto scaling group to be encompassing. So I set the min instance to one so that the auto group always has at least one instance running in the application. And then I also set the desired capacity to one. But then I also set the max instances to 10 so that if I were to set up that low, elastic load balancer and CloudWatch configuration, it could scale. So we're almost done. Uh, I just need to modify the EC2 instance resource to become a, lo a launch configuration. A launch configuration is a template for what each instance in an Oscon group should look like. Basically, you pass in the template into your Oscon group and you, the instances will boot from it. Okay, we're almost there. Um, the next thing I need to do is I need to tell the web server group about its launch configuration. So what I just need to do is add that in here. So there we go, I'm ref now referencing my launch config and the web server will now use this particular launch configuration whenever it's launching up a new instance. So we're almost done. The last couple of things that we need to do is we need to set the instance type inside the properties for the launch configuration. And then we also need to change our wake condition. So let's first knock out the instance type.
I'm just going to create an M1 small. And that's it for the instance type. Now for the wait condition. A wait condition is used to signal success to the CloudFormation stack once the EC2 instance has completely configured itself. Uh, this is important in Alice Gun Group as the instance could start serving traffic before the instance is fully configured, uh, potentially leaving the user with a poor user experience. So I'm going to go and change the EC2 instance to launch config. And then I also realized I need to change this right here from EC2 instance to launch config. This just tells CloudFormation and NIT which resource to start uh, provisioning. Okay, so that's it for CloudFormation, for, for our CloudFormation template. Uh, now all we need to do is we need to test it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the configuration temp or the CloudFormation template, and it should create a Jenkins environment. And the reason why it's creating a Jenkins environment is I'm really I'm stealing most of the code that I wrote in the last screencast, which connects up to Hosted Chef and then builds out an, an environment from Hosted Chef, uh, the internal, the internals of the environment. And the way it's doing that is it is using Hosted Chef and the role Jenkins, which is essentially the Tomcat cookbook and Jenkins cookbook we wrote in episode three. And what it does is it goes and installs itself uh, using Hosted Chef. And right here is where it does a call out to Hosted Chef to make it self configured. Okay, so after we run this CloudFormation template and assuming we have a Jenkins environment, what we'll do to verify that auto scaling is this great and uh, amazing thing is we'll go and terminate the instance just to see if it creates a new instance to replace it. Okay, our CloudFormation template created successfully, and now let's check the instance. Okay, we have our M1 small instance. Now let's go and check to see if the instance is available. Jenkins. Okay, there we go. Our Jenkins environment is up and running. So now let's delete the instance and see what happens. And there we go. We have a new auto scaling instance right up and available. I don't think it has completely configured itself yet. I just want to show that it will recreate. Um, in probably about five or six minutes, it'll be up and available with Jenkins again. But basically, we know this because the same instance that terminated, that we terminate this one right here, it booted up and was able to configure itself with the chef. So this one will do the same since it's using the same launch configuration. So. What we have here is a self-healing environment. It will replace your environment every time an instance becomes faulty or unavailable. And believe me, this really does happen. I've seen it many times where my instance that I've had sitting around just becomes unavailable. Um, out of it just like a, a physical a hardware failure or something, well, basically the instance just goes away. And luckily, auto scaling is there to just replenish it. Running your instances inside of an auto scaling group gives you mu so much benefit, and it's so easy to implement. To be honest, there's almost no reason to not have all your environments run inside one. Whenever my team or I are developing a script infrastructure for a client, we almost always deliver it inside of an auto scaling group, similar to what I've shown here. We could have used several other services in conjunction with our auto scaling group to make a very, very highly available and fault tolerant infrastructure, like our Elastic Load Balancer and CloudWatch. In a future screencast, I will go into this, but for now, I'll just leave you with the auto scaling group. If you like this screencast and want to get updates when new ones are posted, hit like and then subscribe to our channel. And if you have any feedback or inquiries, please email us at info at Stelgen.com or tweet me with the handle at Brian Jakovich. Stelgen itself at Stelgen. If none of those work, just leave a comment in YouTube.